Welcome to Crucible Radio, and welcome to a new era of Destiny 2 as we know it. Guys, guys, come on. Come on, come on. I just had the big... It's a great expansion. There's a lot of... What? Did you say I'm cute? I've, Start the show, Andrew. A normal haircut. <laughs> One normal haircut, please. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I hope you're listening to this at five in the morning (laughs) on Monday, because that's how we do. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Guys, I had an observation. Uh, I want to talk first impressions of Forsaken. You want to know what my, like, first real punch to the gut first impression of Forsaken is? Sure. Yes. Is that, um, as you know, when we started this show, we accepted we were a bit of a, a niche show, right? A bit of a niche. Uh, in fact, it's a show about a video game, but it's also a show about specifically a PvP part of a video game. It's already a niche of a niche. Well, guys, my first impression was, holy shit, I have gone niche cubed because now this is a podcast about a video game, about PvP, about only ever using a bow. <laughs> <laughs> shit, these bows. I don't care how niche it is. I love this with all my heart, and I assume there's at least a, <laughs> at least a hundred other people. There are dozens of us. us. <laughs> Birds, we will get to more of your oh, observations. But oh, first, I love them shits. we need to do a quick shout out to this week's sponsor. That'd be Universal Orlando. They got their Halloween Horror Nights, bringing together stories from the world's most notorious creators of horror. Select nights September 14th through November 3rd in Universal Studios, Florida. Face terrifying haunted houses, including Netflix's Stranger Things and more. Plus, experience sinister scare zones, outrageous live shows, and some exhilarating Universal Studios attractions. Go check it out. You can learn more. Orlando.HalloweenHorrorNights.com slash Crucible. That's Orlando.HalloweenHorrorNights.com slash Crucible. C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E. And Birds just said the name of this show. We are Crucible Radio, the podcast for all things Destiny 2, PvP, and Gambit, PvP, and bows, PvP. and we regular haircuts. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. That was Birds. I'm Bones. Say hi, Swain. Hi. That's me, Swain. I read part of that ad. Yes, you did. Good job, guys. Way to, yes. way to lock that down. Professional podcasting going on over here. Well, okay. I gave, uh, obviously, this is Forsaken Week. Y'all been playing it for six days <laughs> or <Straight>. more already <laughs> continuously, <laughs> changing out the diapers on an hourly basis. Just get yourself a glass of water. While you're, you're listening to this, make sure that you're staying hydrated. I'm medically dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you do what you got to do. Um, but hey, I got to give my first impression. Uh, what was y'all's first impression? First impression is there's a lot more stuff. And for the first time in a long time, I have to like learn about this game, which I'm all for, for the most part. But it's kind of crazy. It, it's not just beat the campaign, go back to doing what you're doing. There is a lot to explore still. And I've been playing a lot, but I still feel like I don't know half of what's going down in uh, some of the areas and some of these other cool mm-hmm. things people have referenced in discord where I'm like, Hey, what? I didn't get a second day off work. What, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> what's going on? And then um, the bounties page. Yeah. That's a lot to do. I would say they could have slapped the title destiny three on this and gotten away with it. <laughs> for real. Yeah, I mean it's it's safe to say. And like I feel like I've said this almost almost every expansion. 
But uh, with this one, I can for sure say this is the best Destiny we've ever played. Yeah. By a fucking mile. Oh my! Like it's it's. It's so many things that feel distinctly Destiny from so many eras of Destiny all rolled up into one package, and um, I'm I'm very grateful that this exists because holy holy camole, it's um it's a lot. It's pretty it's pretty wild. There is we get we're gonna have to hit all of our our regular stuff when we get big drops like this. I'm so excited to actually get back into the you know the breakdowns of like what perks are good or like uh-huh. is this the best pvp perk or do i keep this loadout for pve and you know multiple armor sets and there's issues i have with all of those things i'll be honest but like i am just excited to have something to work towards and all the all this like different meta that's going to evolve in different strategies and it does remind me a lot of of some of the days of like you know late in d1 where where it sort of figured out what the, how they wanted armor to work, but here we're all trying to grind for that t- tier, tier 12 build or whatever, and there's so much to to look for, and I'm checking different pieces and stuff like that now. And, and actually, I think one of the big things is going out there with two or three versions of the same gun and just trying them out and seeing which one I like. And I don't really want to hang on to like 50 <laughs> some machine guns right now, and I'm sure like, oh, no, I'll delete a god roll, but... With my four years of Destiny 2 and Destiny knowledge and, and what's good and what I like, uh, it's been really fun to look for those roles and not think, well, this is garbage or I have no idea what this does, but going like, ooh, that one I know I will like because that hits all the spots of of things yeah. I like in a gun. That's been really fun. I think the best piece of advice I can give to someone, because like obviously, Bones, you've been playing for a while. So like advice to someone that hasn't really been here since maybe like the beginning of De- Destiny 1. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say do hold on to that. You probably have a decent amount of vault yeah. space. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Vault. We, uh, I, <laughs> this is to say, we all, at least when it came out, had a fair amount of vault space to work with. Now. 250 got- more to work with. <laughs> it's to be, absurd. To be yeah. Very, very fair. And you can delete like pretty much all the shaders that are in your vault. So you mm-hmm. really don't have to have that much stuff in your vault. Um, I highly suggest holding on to all your stuff, enjoying the campaign and enjoying what's happening right now. And at some point when someone else figures it out, go back and figure out what you have in your vault. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, because there's going to be something where someone's like, Oh, this perk set on armor is the best. Oh yeah, you I need found it. some hidden bonus in this one perk where it actually increases your stability as well, and it's not you listed, go. and you want to go look at it. Or you come at the other way, you just say, all right, I'm putting together a, a dual SMG build. You know, you have an idea in your head, you want to have 20 SMGs in your vault that you get to pick with. And yeah, if there's any real junkers, and I don't think there are, at least not in the same way there certainly were in D1, which we can talk about later. It's uh, it's nice to have those options, right? It's nice to put together an armor build and um, have a lot of options. I think one thing I can say for sure is uh, I did ask the question a couple weeks ago, what, if anything, do we think we'll be holding on to from year one? And um, I know at least I was <laughs> wrong because the answer is absolutely nothing because why would you when there's all this new hotness? There's still, you know, I still got my play of the game. I still got some stuff I'm not going to dismantle, but the idea of going back to a gun with one interesting perk on it (laughs) versus a gun with one interesting perk and two mediocre perks, but still Mm -hmm. there's three perks on it. I mean, come on, come on. I've been slowly phasing my stuff out and just trying to find similar proxies to what I like or better ones, obviously, like something better and I know it's better, like comes across my way. Throw it in my load uh, loadout, kind of play with it. But there's for sure stuff that I'm just never going to stop using until a better thing comes along my way. That's it, right? Like, I've got my my high-impact shotgun, my deadpan delivery I'm holding on to, right? Like, I just don't have enough drops yet to replace it. It will be replaced. There's a, a, the right shotgun is going to come along someday. But, uh, yeah, we're getting there. I, just, I just checked. Nice. I have 10... Year one guns that I'm keeping in my vault for just a little while longer because I don't want to get rid of them. All of them are masterworked and all of them 
are guns that were with me for like 30 plus raids or just always a staple or like sure. the your sentimentals. Yeah. And the nightfall exclusives where I'm like, ah, hold up. Like, I don't want to dismantle that one just yet. I'll just look at it. It's kind of a, a trophy in that sense. But yeah, I, I was going to say that one of the more satisfying things has truly been ridding my inventory of all this stuff. And, and I'll give it one last look and go like, this was one of my favorite warlock looks of in all of destiny. I'm so uh, into this armor combo and stuff like that, but it's time to just get the new stuff with new gear. And uh, it's been very satisfying. I say like, I've done this in the past where you sort of like, you know, you try to save up a bunch of stuff to spend it all in the expansion, but it was just a really, really satisfying experience of actually going to the tower and clearing my vault out, deleting shaders, doing all that. Like, Hey, that's part of it. It, like let's be honest getting the loot is good deleting loot is also a satisfying <laughs> aspect of destiny and like the reason one of the reasons we play so i just had a great time really like like pushing through that that step into year two and like going through all those processes of like spring cleaning it's, i love spring cleaning and i like that sort of thing so it's very satisfying like wow there really is a change here in this game this game really does feel new and different and that's because i'm getting rid of everything i thought i might be attached to yeah well, get rid of it now because your vault's immediately going to fill up with a bunch of rolls. Get around. <laughs> oh, I got down someday. to the first page. Fifty out of five hundred. That's how thin my ah, vault. That's pretty was. good. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get into it. Um, and I know this is a PvP show, but we would be remiss if we didn't spend a little bit of time talking about the rest of the world. I want to just talk about the tangled shore and the dreaming city because, my God, these are. In my opinion, the two best public spaces we've had in Destiny, period. Um, Mm -hmm. And everywhere I look in them, there's just little improvements, little design changes over the previous ones that just that just make them work in in a way that they or like feel special, feel like not a video game map, but feel like a real place. I was shocked, and I'm trying to avoid all. Spoilers, I think it's a little early for that right now, but just, of course, the Dreaming City, we knew about it. Getting there and being a little underleveled, not knowing what to do, all the public events are new. So while they're just public events, I'm not like going to die or anything like that. I didn't know how to trigger the heroic or whatever, and and everything's a little high level. So I'm just kind of (laughs) like making my way through and just kind of exploring some caves. And for the first time in a very long time in Destiny, it felt like it was worth it to go dig to the end of this cave and climb up on this rock and jump on this Uh cliff and see where it goes. And I found a space that I still don't know what it is. (laughs) It's like, I can't describe it, but off to the left, there was these staggeringly left. Of course, you know, as these like staggeringly tall rock formations. And I was like, that's a beautiful set piece. And then I realized like, Oh, you can jump on all that. And I spent 10 minutes in this jumping puzzle and I found something at the top that I didn't have the item for yet. But I was like, Whoa, that felt so good to know. I just jumped around like a weirdo and just like exploring and really found something and went, what is this? I need to figure out what this is. I need to ask people about it. And on top of that, it's literally the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. I've also always said that I think all video game settings should be outdoors in the daytime. I think daytime is the best time. And the <laughs> Dreaming City looks exactly what I want. And I was talking to uh, our friend Moonvald, and she was like, so how's living out your Legolas fantasy? And I sent her a screenshot. I was like, this is literally Rivendell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Oh, they, yeah, they even they even have, what's it, Riven something? That Riven perk or... Something, something, yeah, it sounds something. I yeah, no Lord of the Rings. I just won't say it is. It's very Lord of the Ringsy. I I want to, you know, the Dreaming City is stunning. I want to really praise the Tangled Shore. I love the like the concept of it that it's just all these lashed together asteroids in the asteroid belt. But as a space, I found it really interesting. I love the design of it. I love how you're just like one rickety bridge away from falling off into nothingness. <laughs> By the way, uh, the missus asked me, where's the gravity coming from here? And I <laughs> instinctively said, don't you worry, we got enough gravity, we're fine. <laughs> uh, but then I wonder, where does the gravity come from? But like in terms of quality of life there's just a lot of little things i love one i think the space top to bottom is designed for bows 
it's designed to be a space that works well for bows. There's lots of long sight lines. Um, there's lots of good little perches and what have you, good cover. But there's other stuff too. Like one of just the small things is that most of the patrols are salvage missions. Because guess what? Shooting guys is fun. <laughs> Driving on your sparrow a really long time and then standing still someplace. N not fun, <laughs> not nearly as much fun. Just that they they made that choice that like every patrol that I look at is like, well, I got a minute until this thing shows up. Like, no, they're almost all salvage missions. It's so nice. Um, also, and I can just say this applies to both of them. The law sectors in uh, um, in yeah, this expansion, wow. so cool, such an elevation. Even if there's no clear story to them, just like the layout of these places, the way they kind of double back on themselves, or there's insane verticality. It's just... You can describe them for the first time because you can go to your Discord chat and be like, yo, guys, I just found this law sector with so-and-so. And then everyone will be like, oh, yeah, that one. Or be like, what? That sounds insane. Like, they are just interesting little set pieces that make the world feel alive and deep and interesting and have history or just flat out weird. Like, there's, I don't, again, not spoiling anyone, but there's one I just walked in and I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> They're just weird. I suppose along the lines of, uh, you know, a little old quality of life stuff. Um, early on in the game, no spoilers here, when you meet the individual known as the spider and you like sort of unlock him as a person you go to talk to, when I saw that big uh, resource exchange, with like, yeah, you can buy all the things and you can trade your shards for cores, for glimmer, for all that. And Thank God. Like, oh, oh my God, finally, right? <laughs> like... The, I mean, we had a similar sort of thing happen, I guess, roughly at this point in D1. And it was just like, yes, please, great, thank you. It is maybe a bit of a hassle to have to be stockpiling all these planetary resources for uh, the infusion. That's going to be mostly a temporary problem. But yeah, just to be able to go, you know, to be maxed out on Glimmer and not go, all right, I guess I'll buy a bunch of mods to <laughs> dismantle that I don't need, like, that's yeah, that's quite nice. It's probably the first time that I've actually been like hurt for glimmer and been like, man, I should do some bounties so I can get some glimmer. <laughs> yep. Are we at the point where we can talk about bows yet? <laughs> Anytime, birds. Yet. Let's talk Are about we there bows. Yet? Oh my god. I okay. There have been an and we actually just talked about it in the show last week when we were talking about our sponsor. New Tomb Raider game and how great the bow implementation was in that and how they let you do it. Let you play the entire game with the bow. Well, guess what? Destiny did it too. And I have <laughs> to say, out of all of the bows in video games I've ever played, I'm thinking of the new Tomb Raider, of course, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I think some of the Far Cry has got them. Um, the Last of Us, the rickety one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Last of Us. That's a great one. Um We've seen all different types of bows, different implementations. We've seen bow as your only weapon where everything's based around it. I think I can say just in terms of the pure kinetic feel of shooting a bow in a video game, what they've built here is just unparalleled. I just, I just love it. It's like every aspect of the draw, like when you hit max draw and you get that tiny little audio cue to know that you're there the way that they built the sights, the way it's so snappy, um, little things like I, I was just so overjoyed to be shooting people with it. It was like, I know I should be doing a mission, but I'm just running around Tangled Shore, just shooting ads <laughs> in the head with this bow. Um, when I saw how they sort of implemented the jump shot with the bow, it was like, it's like, oh my, you can do it. You can do it consistently. You can time your jumps around it. It, it all works together. It just feels very, very worked out. Like they really spent a lot of time polishing it. Um, I played the entire PVE campaign with my bow. Um, I have only once briefly taken it off in PVP or Gambit and I regretted it and put it back on and immediately felt <laughs> a lot better. I, I just, I just love them. And I like, too, how there's not a ton of them at this point. There's the one you get from Petra. There's the energy one that drops. There's the lightweight energy one that drops. And then there's the exotic. And that's it. I personally don't like the energy slot one at all. I know it's very similar. I masterworked the Petra one. I've been using it exclusively. I think it's quite great. 
the explosive rounds in particular are. I'll take a breath. If you guys want to say something? <laughs> I'm about just going to totally reiterate what you already said. But the 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 actual feel, the kinetic feel of the bow itself is surprisingly just perfect because it's it's a hit scan weapon. You know, like it's not going to miss. It's not. There's no travel time. There's not like a you know, like a shaky hand thing. I mean, it'll release, but it feels like a lightweight thing. It feels like a visceral. Like, oh yeah, I just launched this string. It's not a space bow that's really just a gun with a big long <laughs> thing on it you know like it feels like you just let a bow go and it's got that like weight to it in your hand that just feels awesome so yeah just again reiterating that the the mechanics of it and the feel of it are like nothing i expected even though i knew i'd love something like this because it's the kind of the, pl- the kind of fantasy that I have in like every video game ever. Um, but yeah, it's amazing to say that destiny now has uh, one of the best, if not the best like bow experiences I can think of. Man, I, I want to really enjoy using the bow and I can honestly say I really liked it in PVE. It was taking over to PVP. They kind of like threw me off and I'm going to have to spend more time with it because not being able to like pulling that, and spending all that time on the shot and not getting like the one hit KO, it was it wasn't as satisfying as the PVE version of it, where you can just like you're snapping back and forth and you're knocking out dregs and you're knocking out all these PVE enemies one shot. So uh, transitioning to PVP was a little rough, but you know I have I'm, some thoughts on this matter. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna enjoy it. I really want the exotic one. Yeah, the exotic one looks cool. I, uh, there, there's just like little things like just, I'll just say as a PV weapon, I mean, it's when you touch on it, it, it feels perfect, right? It's effective at any range. The hip it's, fire feels awesome. It's very accurate. Hip fire looks great. Um, if you are getting a cleanup shot, you can not knock the arrow all the way. You, you can not get that full draw and it's still predictable. It's still useful, still does damage. Just little things like how one shot from the bow will break a phalanx shield is just like a nice touch. It's it's helpful. Little things like the reload animation, like if you're ever flying and you don't have an arrow and you just tap the reload button, it just real quickly put puts one in there. I don't think it saves you any time or anything, but it just feels well designed. I'll tell you, and uh, this, this I think is a good transition into using a bow in PvP, which I have had mixed results on, um, but under the best of circumstances, find very effective. Explosive rounds on a bow are awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would say almost, almost required. The elemental, uh, uh, you know, firefly kind of explosion, that's cool. And I could certainly see that being useful. Um, but the thing about the explosive rounds, like I want to describe this moment. So first of all, if you're having no luck in PvP with a bow, what you really need is another bow on your team. Because, or, or, you, or just almost any long range weapon, someone who's willing to peek with you. Because one headshot from a bow, plus basically anything else, I'm not sure the exact <laughs> numbers, but that, like that's usually like that, that is enough to get the kill. When you start off a control match on Endless Veil, run to the side and start shooting at B because people will just line up there. Uh, of course, peek shoot, knock your arrows behind cover, and then step out to shoot them, go back in. I find that that can be disorienting enough to people won't get back into cover in time. The explosive rounds help with that also. You get the little explosion disorientation. But I found myself kind of doing something with, like I realized what I was doing and why I was doing it, and it just made me chuckle, which is that if I'm expecting somebody to run around a corner and I've got an arrow pulled back, I can do one of two things. If I've been holding it for a second, I can, I guess one of three things. I can just, it'll just go when it runs out, but then you sort of lose control over the timing of it. You can tap the sprint button and redraw it, or you can shoot it at the corner where you think they're going to pop out. And with the explosion, you've got a second. And so I found myself using it almost kind of in the same way you'd use Thorn, I guess, where I would shoot it sort of around the cover or at the ground right next to a corner, knowing that if somebody is standing right there, I'm going to get the little damage ping on them. And that works surprisingly well. It doesn't do a lot of damage, right? You're not going to kill anybody with it. 
Um, but you do get the numbers show up. You get the little peck from it. Um, and yeah, super useful. Also, just the two bow thing. Like Keen and I were playing on Endless Veil, vale, and he was like, I don't know about these bows. Would I use them? I said, just put one on with me. We, you'll see. And we went and stood at the 50 50. <laughs> and we just, like, like five people in a row, just like one after another, a couple doubles in there. That was just like, yeah, if two people are quick on the draw with a bow, you will get a lot of kills very quickly. Instant time to kill. It's- yeah. Yeah. It becomes the most effective team shot weapon. Because the damage is instantaneous and two two kills them. So yeah, absolutely. I saw uh, I think it was Arrow Knight from the Destiny Reset podcast. Uh, he posted a video of it, and he was using the bow in PvP as like the first shot, and like switching real quick mm-hmm. to a hand cannon to finish. And it was almost always like it cleaned up. So mm-hmm. it's a good cleanup weapon for sure. And then also being able to like do a whole engagement by like hit him with the bow and then switch to hand cannon and clean it up real fast. Um, there's a lot of good combos there. I've been thinking a lot about sort of what the right secondary weapon to pair with a bow is. Um, the hand cannon one I've heard a couple times, which is interesting, but to me it seems kind of the same thing, right? Like they're both precision, semi-auto kind of, medium to long range weapons. Um, you know, I guess you can span a hand cannon up close, but I think my preference was sometimes for the SMG, but mostly pairing it with an energy shotgun. Um, just feels like it kind of covers the bases, right? If you're getting closed in on, you have that insta kill, um, with something short range, whereas the bow is really a a long range weapon. And like, be, to be clear, you can map people with a bow, at least on all the PvP maps that we're playing on. Um, I would continually surprised at how effective it is at range. Well, I mean, the kinetic one is good for sure, but I have to use the energy one because pairing it with Ace of Spades is oh, yeah. absolutely incredible. And if I could shift over to that area, Ace of Spades, <laughs> if you haven't done this quest, do it immediately. There has <laughs> never been a gun in Destiny that feels like such an everything weapon. Use it everywhere. I've yet to feel like I'm at a disadvantage or I need to switch. It's so good. It's so powerful. And it's such a satisfying feel. I mean, we we always praise weapons that have those unique animations and its reload is so cool. And wow, Ace oh, of Spades. Reload. Snaps for Ace of Spades. Holy cow. It, I, I, I was just playing with Dan, and he described it as the best hand cannon that has ever existed in Destiny, mm-hmm. which uh, I, I do not have it yet, but I think that is probably, from what I have seen, not an not a unfair assessment. Oh, my God. <laughs> have you guys gotten any other like new exotics? I know they're dropping a little less often, which people have been appreciating, but I don't know if you guys got any. I did get... Uh, I got the Cerberus Plus One. This mm. is... Uh, uh, that auto rifle. Four headed dog. Yeah. So it's like four auto rifle rifles taped together. So it works like an auto rifle, but it sort of has like a bursty sort of scatter to it. Um, you know, I, I had to be honest, I haven't spent a ton of time with it. I kind of tried it out in, um, in, in PV, you know, it's, it's all right. Like it didn't call to me. Um, and it shares a slot with my beloved. So it just wasn't going <laughs> to happen. Um, Nah, you know, it was cool. It was cool. I, uh, jury's still out on it, let, let's say. Mm-hmm. I got the Borealis, which I didn't yeah, actually yeah. even get on PS4 at any time in the first year. Totally it's, OP, right? Yeah, Breaking right. The game. We, should probably, <laughs> we should probably nerf it. It's really ruined the game. Actually, no, it's in my vault. I'm, I'm using so much other stuff. Uh, but I got a chest piece for my Warlock. And uh, it's it's really cool looking. It's called Phoenix Protocol. I like mm-hmm. the connection to Starfire Protocol, um, but this one directly buffs your well of well of light, well of something. Uh, I just got to my second subclass. I'm a warlock. Basically, it gives you super for kills you get while standing in the well of radiance. That's the name. Uh, but it looks really good. I bet it could be a decent raid. Exotic, and I'm just so happy to have an exotic that's not a Fidian aspect on my warlock. 
And uh, it's cool. There's a lot of exotic changes that we'll, uh, we'll eventually cover when we do another exotic report card that hit with Forsaken. But it's just been great to have different stuff on my character. Same as just getting rid of legendary gear. I just want to try new stuff. So yeah, I've had transversive steps, etc. But there's a few I'm still hunting for that I'm really excited for. I'm lusting after the one-eyed mask. Oh, oh boy. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about this thing. Yeah. And we all watch that MTash video, right? Oh yeah. So this this one eye mask. Oh my god. <laughs> um if you haven't heard about it, uh you should go watch the MTash video. He gets a little in depth about it, but it's crazy. It can, it uh will so what happens is if someone shoots you while you're wearing the one eye mask, uh you get a marker on that person so that you can seek your revenge on them. And it's basically like Keen Scout for hunters so that you can see them indefinitely. It doesn't wear off. And when you kill them, you get your health back fully and an overshield and you get extra damage. So basically you just need to like kill the guy that you're having a 1v1 and you get that all that stuff. Yeah, and with Ace uh... of Spades bonus rounds that do more damage and the mask perk procced, uh, it becomes a two headshot kill. So that's something. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like a lot. Seems like a lot. <laughs> Bye, Worm yeah. Husk. Hello, this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that's it, right? Like, is it just Titan's turn? Are we going to get some insane Warlock exotic in the next expansion that is um, instant life restoring in some way? Does yeah, that'd be great. I'll take at that. Some point? Yeah. Right. I, uh, I mean, it's, it's their, their sort of stated goal for this one to just go spicy with it, right? Like mm-hmm. let it get spicy and, and, and uh, you know, have people go for that. They certainly have made good on it, but uh, yeah, you know, spicy out there. Be careful, be careful. Well, let me ask this. Exotics aside, uh, we've been getting probably this word more meaningful than ever now. We've been getting drops. We've been getting legendary engrams that turn into a gun or a piece of armor, where even if we've seen it before, we almost certainly haven't seen this particular one before. And that's pretty cool. Have you guys gotten any interesting drops that you like yet? So I think this is a really great time to address the fact that like, I didn't think about it the entire time that we were like, oh, there's like random rolls are going to come back and we're going to have a lot more options on guns. And I kind of just like got immediately in the mindset like, okay, well, I'm going to be looking after um, looking for one specific gun and one specific role. And I kind of leaned into the fact that like random rolls for me was just like a really long chore with no guaranteed finish. Mm -hmm. But I totally forgot. And this has been a delight to me that there's going to be guns that like I previously like said, whatever, I'm never going to use that. I've probably dismantled 1000 of them. (laughs) And now I'm taking a second look because they tend to get a lot more fun when the perks get jumbled up. Um, I have a black scorpion that I got the other day that has, it has the, like the dragonfly. So it explodes on headshots and it's also got grave robber. So it's just been so much fun. It reloads so fast and it's, it's been like a PV, PVE like monster for me. And I, like I said, I probably dismantled 1000 black scorpions before this. And it's just been really nice to see like, Oh, these extra perks and these weird perks being on guns are going to make my, like every gun make me like second guess every gun I've previously kind of enjoyed in some way, like probably set it down because like it didn't fit the meta all that much, but I'm going to be taking a second look at a lot of all these. Uh, but to answer your question, Brits, I got a crooked fang with box breathing, and I really like that. Yeah, I was not prepared for them not only to have new guns with random rolls, and I know they said it, right? Like, we all knew we were getting shiny new better devils. I was not prepared for a lot of guns to come back with random rolls and mm-hmm. hearing people 
getting even more God roll anti abuse and what have you. Oh, sorry. Did do I have to put a dollar in the God roll jar? We have a God <laughs> roll jar now. I'm the sorry. God I'm, roll. Didn't mean to break the seal on that one quite yet. Can I get a um, regular haircut and a God roll, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I I I agree, and I think um. I feel totally okay with, uh, I'm just so excited to delete almost everything in my vault at this point. Um, I don't think, though, I've gotten any weapon rolls that really spoke to me yet, or like were enough to replace my year one version of that. Um, I've, you know, I've had a couple decent ones. I've had a surprising number of guns that have both, um, usually SMGs that have got both tap the trigger and under pressure on them, which is mm-hmm. kind of amusing. So you get like the initial boost of accuracy <laughs> and then increasing accuracy as, real, as the mag empties. Real wiggly right in the middle, but then it levels out. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, if I had to pick one, um, I want this one to be better than it is. There's a new SMG called a Trackless Waste. It's pretty cool. Uh, I got one with uh, quick draw, high caliber rounds, and outlaw on it, which on another gun would be a great roll. On this one, you know, you don't get a ton of precision kills with it because it's a super fast firing SMG. It's a little squirrely, you know. Yeah, I don't know, but nothing, nothing that's really called to me yet. I will say it seems like the quality of rolls that I'm getting on weapons in D2 is significantly better than the quality of rolls on your average gun in D1. Like, there's just, there's still, you know, there's still field prep, right? Yeah, but it seems like there's just in D1, you'd constantly be getting rolls of like, oh, well, this is garbage. Uh, a shotgun where it only has range reducing perks. Why would I want this? It seems like the pool has been narrowed and sort of the perk setup has been tuned a bit to make, you know, every gun at least understandable, if not super appealing. Of course, I went and cashed in all of my tokens. I do have uh, The Last Dance, which is a uh, one of those three burst sidearms that's got range finder. Outlaw and high caliber on it that I like pretty good, pretty kicky. Well, while I while I don't love the concept of random rolls just flat out right, uh, I will speak on the weapon side of a few things to say. I think the weapon side, you guys have already hit two really good points. Um, it's and it's basically that the rolls feel better, feel more useful. Of course, peel uh, field prep and auto loading holster. When I see that com- combination, I'm like, goodbye. Like, thank you. <laughs> At least I know which ones I can dismantle. Um, but one thing that stood out immediately and has really felt like a cool decision is seeing perks that I sort of expected to be on one type of gun show up on almost everything or on a, on a, uh, an unexpected archetype or, or gun type. And I'm thinking of stuff like, well, I got a sniper rifle with kill clip and that's really cool. Yeah. And so I got, it's called Twilight Oath. It's from the Dreaming City. It's a a very high rate of fire. It's actually like Alone as a God, which is, I think, the fastest sniper in year one. So it's like, oh, it's a little soft for me. I like that kind of heavy hitter, like Silicon Naroma. But this has ambitious assassin and kill clip. And it's like, okay, I kill a small enemy in Gambit. And then I've got this magazine of higher impacts and I can fire off like seven shots really, really fast. So it actually does pretty good damage on stuff like that. And that's actually just really fun to mess around with. Uh, But the one that has really stood out to me, and it's actually my first level 10 masterwork so far, I've only done it to two, uh, has been uh, Zenobia D rocket launcher. Oh, yeah. Um, Can I I just ask... um, when you posted about that in chat, did you know that I'd posted two pages earlier saying like, hey, those those tracking rockets are the gambit secret? If Everyone's been saying it, but this thing. one's the best one. This one's the best one. But you're right. This is this is the thing that means I can free up my exotic slot for Ace of Spades and not just put on Sleeper like everyone else. Uh, this thing is really fun. For, for those of you who just never picked up a hockey rocket launcher in year one, and I don't blame you. Hockey precision frames always have tracking. It's just like the built-in perk, which is really cool. So we've got that. And guess what? Cluster bombs. Okay. Those are like the two things of all rocket launchers yeah. that we've always liked. It's like, does it follow them and does it explode real big? And I thought this was almost a waste until I read the description, but this one also has range finder on a rocket launcher. And instead of just giving you more accuracy at range on a rocket launcher and grenade launchers, 
it enhances the velocity. So when you lock in and aim down sights, you get a faster rocket. So then I got a velocity masterwork perk and the velocity is at like 84. So it's like the fastest rocket I've ever fired in the, in the, in all of destiny. And it's been so great. Like you said, combating invaders in gambit, they pop a dawn blade up in the sky and they're just dropping bombs. And I'm just like, Bing, and I just, you know, RPG them out of the sky. And I just like that. I like seeing a perk I never would have expected on a rocket launcher. Make me go, hold up. I really, really like this. And, uh, The other one is just to get this in there because I had to say it. I don't think I've said it on the show yet. I got my Claymore. Hey, so good for you. Thank you. And uh, it was was a lot of work. Maybe I said it last week. I think I shouted out Adept. Either way, the broadsword, not very different, but it's got a few different perks. I got one with ricochet rounds. If you don't know that already, ricochet rounds is a great perk because yeah, it makes them more stable or whatever, but it's got the secret range boost. So I masterworked that baby. And it's great in everything. It's a really good all-around gun. I, I do like the weapon random rolls. I will say it's been good. It's been fun to to get excited about one versus, you know, the, the five other ones. I think it's nice to have when there's when it gives you more options. Like it's almost yeah. like having yeah. like 50 more guns because one gun can probably have three outcomes. One of them is the best outcome, but then there's two that like maybe fit your weird play style or maybe fit Gambit more than they do if if it's, you know, regular PPP. There's a there's a lot more meat on the same bone. (laughs) Yeah. And I think different from armor, which we can talk about if you guys want, but there is just a good one, right? You get that like in the jar God roll and you're like, that's good. And you'll just use it wherever and you know you like it and you're not like okay, great, that applies to one thing and I need three other versions of Better Devils before I feel like I can use a Better Devils wherever. So weapons have that going for them and for that, I do really appreciate the random roll system. And then there's armor. I uh, I will say right off the bat, uh, I've, I've only really played on my Titan so far. Uh, liking the look of this armor. This armor set, uh, I feel like I got some options here uh, <laughs> compared to... Giant shoulders. <laughs> Warlocks um, are real freaky. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, you. It's about you. You guys earned it, right? You only had like the super high class or the super trashy <laughs> quilted uh, down jacket that I love so much. Now we are the weird man that lives in the woods. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I will say, um, I do appreciate how a lot of these armor rolls will have like. You know, you'll have a very like a rocket launcher scavenger on it, but then you'll also have heavy ammo finder on it. And so it's like, okay, there's the specific one that maybe you were hoping for. And then if, you know, that's not applicable to you, then you also have, um, you also have a secondary sort of more general perk or, you know, it increases accuracy for hand cannons. Hey, that's great. But it also increases a- accuracy for all kinetic and you can sort of switch it off. That That's nice, right? Like that feels like, because, you know, you, maybe you put together the whole Dreaming City set and you want to look good and you want to not have a piece of armor that just is not contributing perk-wise at all. So I thought that was nice. That being said, I don't know what I did to get so many sidearm, linear fusion, <laughs> rocket launcher, and sword perks on my armor, like almost exclusively. Um, I'm sure it'll even out over time, right? It has to, Right. Right? Uh, it seems like the perk space on armor is pretty big. And um, I'm, I'm seeing a lengthy, and maybe this is what I want, I don't know yet, but I'm seeing a pretty lengthy grind to put together, even a single armor <sighs> set where it's like, all right, I'll put mods into this, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think for armor, though, it, what it's missing is like when it does get masterworked is like being able to switch all that. Like, Oh, yeah. We were well. able to, we were able to switch all that in the last versions of like the old armor. Like you could change up like resilience or you know where it went. So with this, I like I would love to be able to be like, yeah, if I feel like spending the master cores, I would like to be able to change this thing to the the thing I want. Okay, hold hold on one sec. We got to give a shout out to our sponsor before we talk about this masterwork stuff because there's no coming back from this masterwork conversation I sense brewing. But we got to give a shout out to our sponsor this week. For the second half of the show, it is, of course, 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You wanna you, you enjoying your Destiny bow? You wanna keep that that good bow vibe going? Well, you gotta check this out. If you're into terrifying tombs, unforgiving jungles, I don't know, a Maya apocalypse. Well, this is just another day for Lara Croft. I love terrifying tombs. Classic. Can't get enough of them. I can't do normal tombs anymore. <laughs> <Just boring. laughs> Look, give me a regular haircut any day of the week, but give me a terrifying tomb, all right? What about uh, what about jungles? You prefer the unforgiving, or you uh, you? Oh like yeah, what, what, you go to the jungle and it's all nice to you? No. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Uh, look, you can experience Lara Croft's defining moment as she becomes the Tomb Raider in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Lara must master the jungle using brand new skills, overcome tombs, both terrifying and I assume otherwise, or maybe they're all terrifying. Uh, but they're full of challenges and puzzles and persevere through her darkest hour as she races to save the world from a Maya apocalypse that, uh, whoop, she put into motion, but she's going to save the world. It's fine. Lara will ultimately be forged into the Tomb Raider she's destined to be. It's available on Xbox One on September 14th. So probably you might be ready to come up for air for a minute from Forsaken. Go check it out. You can pre-order the Croft Edition at your favorite retailer and experience Lara's journey 48 hours later. Go check it out. Guys, I actually did want to give one little shout out before we get back into it. Oh yeah. I just wanted to say hello and thank you uh, to one of our listeners. His name is Barry and he goes by Navy Chief 59. This man is a retired Navy officer and he's been listening to the show for a long time. And I learned this weekend that he listens every week and discusses it with his son and they actually talk about this show. And it made my fucking life. And it was yeah, the coolest like, thing I've ever I'm heard. I'm having a real cat's cradle moment over here, here and there. <laughs> it feels great, honestly. And it's so cool. And, and I, I do love uh, what the three of us have done here. And it's, I feel like we can appeal to, to, to not your average gamer. So, Barry, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you didn't f- pass 15 seconds up too far through the ad. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys listening to the show and everyone else who listens. Yeah. Okay. Let me just say for the record, not just this Barry, all berries <laughs> who might be listening right now. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you for berries. listening. <laughs> We're going to go through first names <laughs> one per week. <laughs> Next week, uh, Barons. Baron. Yep. Yep. Starting, uh, starting in the B <laughs> section. Uh, all right. So let's talk about the masterworks. I will Should say. Should I drop that- takes yet? Are we, are we ready for hot takes? Uh, no. Let me let me say some nice things. First. Okay. Um, <laughs> the incremental masterwork approach had me confused a little bit, but uh, oh, okay, that's cool, right? I guess you know you don't want to shell out for the the whole thing. You just want the little uh, little stats boost or whatever. It is. Okay, no, that's that's good, right? I, it's incremental. Makes sense. Having uh, and there's a caveat here, but having both kill trackers on the weapon and being able to switch back and forth between them, that's nice. Nice not having you. You know, you uh, you you got the the drop you always wanted, but it's already got the masterwork on, and it's the wrong one. You wanted the other one. I hope it applies to exotics as well with the new ones that come out. I don't know. So I guess that's good. They do more than. Um, you know, just uh, look a little bit shiny. You've got this sort of incremental stat boost. I'm sure Fallout's going to science that at some point and tell us exactly how much stat boost you're yeah, going to get. Yeah, dude, science some shit for us. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think of anything nice to say about the Masterworks? It does feel cool to actually level one all the way up. It's That's been true since they've added this feature. Uh, in, in year one, I thought it was hands down the best feature they'd added to the game. I think it's still a very cool thing right now. Yes, still good. Still yeah, good. I think it took away a feature about it that was critical to its success, um, especially with the system of armor when uh, Vanilla Destiny 2 launched. Uh, but I'm looking at my Warlock, and you know what? I just very quickly put on like a usable set. I'm pretty uh, as high light as I can get. And I just realized it's a 418 split. I don't want a 418 split, but I want to wear my highest light stuff or I want all these perks that I got to just randomly roll now. And it seems unfortunate that I can't take this mobility uh, arms that I just got from Dreaming City that are super cool and make them resilience or recovery and just at least give me that sort of one, one, one on those because I want a little more resilience in my life. And uh, 
I, you get the God roll dollar in the jar. And then it's like, oh, but I got a stability master yeah. work on it. So uh, uh, is it the best roll? I don't know. Range. Yeah. This gun that you fell in love with that, that you connected with and uh, you, you had big plans for it. It was to be mm-hmm. your perfect weapon. The one that most encapsulated you, but uh, oh, no, you got the wrong boost on it, which it's like yeah. a, a small thing, but still, you know? I'll, I'm happily, I'm happily willing to just dump, more shards sure. into switching charge up. charge me charge me whatever you want <laughs> let me rotate through the armor spending more more or less and let me get it to that perk and let me actually make it my best piece of armor let me go all right i did all this grinding i found the right armor set now let me just do a few tweaks to it and make it the absolute favorite helmet i've ever wanted or 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 the absolute perfect helmet for my dawn blade bow build or whatever but right now it's less customizable and for that i think um it's missing something i really liked from vanilla small thing um and like it's fine it's whatever it's fine but uh just seems like so unnecessary that it should be this way uh the kill trackers you can now switch it between crucible and uh, PVE mode, or just, I get all enemies mode. But it only keeps track of the one that you currently have it set to. So if I want to use the same bow in PVE and PVP, which I do, <laughs> I've got to switch it back and forth, or like fuck playing Gambit, right? Like I'm just. Only going to get one or the other. Like, wh- what? It, wh- why Why make it that way? You're mm-hmm. you're keeping track of them already. Why, why make it that way? Why make it so it's just, it's not accurate, right? Like, I can, I've got the masterwork on it. I look at my Crucible tracker and I go, oh, well, it's got uh, 100 kills on it, except it's actually 120 because I forgot to turn it on for a game. Yeah, it's fucking annoying. I, I did not appreciate that. Now, how will I know when I go into comp and someone's on a recov because they only have 19 kills on their dire promise, but they're way, way, way better than me. I'm on to you. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, that, I, that seemed like, um, like a mistake. Yeah, I love the way the exotics started doing it. Yeah. The exotics, uh, you know, when you get that masterwork, you start working on it, you get your 250 headshots or whatever, and then boom, you apply that catalyst and you're like, whoa, I have 600 kills on this thing. So it's like there. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just like, are you trying to incentivize me um, going into the menu and switching it back and forth between every activity? Because I'm just not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it on Crucible because anyone can go kill ads, but killing people, well, there's some pride associated with that. Uh, it just it just seemed annoying and unnecessary. Did not appreciate that. Swain's like, can you guys shut up? <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing it right now. Andrew, can I get a hot take? <clears throat> <clears throat> a bunch of people tweeted for a year that they're like, Bungie, make me addicted again, and now I need 25 lettuce every time I infuse something. Ah, what? I think um, you got so you got so used. <laughs> to the quick high you got from infusing literally everything. Just want to use the damn pulse rifle that I got. That's really cool to play, but I got to use a blue gun to win the campaign. And I beat the stupid thing at the end with a stupid sidearm because it was my top light weapon, but I had this really cool auto rifle that I wanted to try. Just, just let me use the stuff. Yeah. I did like that you can infuse the s- same exact thing. That's cool. Yes. That's cool. That's nice. What I found is that um, I just sort of like my standard, uh, actually, well, my standard loadout a lot of times is play of the game and then either a fast firing, uh, with, in my case, day aside or uh, hard hitting deadpan. Um, I don't know if they even vary by weapon, but the three that I have are all alkane dust. So like I'm not even stocking up on the other shit because I just want to infuse those up so I can use them generally at highlight. Uh, I'm just going to be the king of alkane dust. You need that <laughs> dust? You come to me. I got your dust, man. How much dust do you need? I got all the dust. I keep a lifetime supply on hand. Totally out of all the others, but I'm good on that dust front. Like, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I understand. 
people. And like psychologically, maybe there's a part of me on some level that is like ultimately more content or more entertained by having this back and forth kind of thing. But in general, like I just want to play the game. If I get a gun, you don't know me, game psychologist, it, right? Like they probably do. They got us all mapped out. We're all drawn <laughs> on a whiteboard. Somewhere. I'm not your rat in a cage. Yeah, I'm not but a part like, of your system. Yeah, the idea that it's like, oh hey, I got a cool thing, but first I gotta go fly to the place to talk to the guy to exchange some of this for some of these. But then I'm running low on this, so I need to go. <laughs> Run around in circles. It's just, I, okay, okay. I'm sure they, you know, Bungie hired some, some in, what do they call them, investment designer, some PhD who said, no, no, they love it. They'll They're tell psychologically you they it, they manipulating the players. They can't get <laughs> enough of it. Oh, I mean, they, they just flew 30 of us out to Seattle for, to tell them that. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, catering for the people who I'm have got you. ten thousand of everything in their inventory, <laughs> or just like no, I, I I have zero microphasic data lice or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> <Dataline>. <laughs> and it's pissing me off. Uh, <sighs> whenever you see a highly upvoted post in your forum of choice. Not even upvote, let's say a highly regarded <laughs> post in your communication venue on the internet of choice. Um, just consider if the subject line could be, in so many words, just abuse me, daddy. Get me addicted, <laughs> daddy. Come on, why don't you hurt me like you used to? Do you not love me anymore? Like 90% of the, these complaints are just some version of that. Where over here, just like, I broke free of that cycle, man. I just, I just have a little bit of happiness. I got on with my life. Now I gotta, gotta get hooked on that dust again. <laughs> my uh, will work for weapon parts flare on Reddit hasn't really been <laughs> accurate, but right now I feel it. I feel yep. it. We're back. Uh, I feel it. I feel it's, like sorry right. to to kind of like wrap up my thoughts about Forsaken and its drop. Um, I didn't get to finish most of the campaign. It's been a crazy week. I did do most of it, but I unfortunately played a lot, not unfortunately, fortunately played a shit ton of Gambit <laughs> when <laughs> yes, yeah. I had time to play. So like I'm really putting off a lot of this game simply because I cannot stop playing Gambit when I log on. Uh, it has its hooks in me and I can't wait to talk about it on this show at length. I've been very quiet this episode because I want you guys to get it out. Next episode, I'm just going to never shut up about uh, yep. Gambit. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the cool things, all the strategies and the guns mm -hmm. and uh, maps and uh, how I think about each enemy and team composition. It's amazing. Gambit Some is people. so strong, so good. Uh, I know... Adam Pino from Bungie wants hot takes on Gambit, but I think they might happen next week because <laughs> it's just too much fun right now to really, to really have any takes. Some people have been wondering, well, you guys are a PVP show and aside from invasion, you know, it's mostly just killing ads. That's PV. Are you going to talk about it? And to you, I say, I listen next week and probably every week after that. And we've <laughs> been going for, for a good couple minutes here. I mean, I think the, the fundamental truth is that more than anything, it is a PvP mode in the sense that it is player versus player. Yeah, you kill ads, but like none of us are struggling to kill ads. None of us are like having a ton of trouble taking out our shotguns to melt a blocker. It's 100% about playing the game and timing and outsmarting and yeah, all that stuff that Swain mentioned. I feel like Gambit will bring out the the shot caller in me. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it it makes me a better person. I thought about Gambit that for makes sure. Me a better person. <laughs> Gambit Gambit absolutely is a, is a game mode that um 
fits in perfectly with his shot collar. And that doesn't mean every team needs one and that only the best teams have shot collars. Some of some people just are on that same level. Uh, but if that's your style or you know you're good at it or you like it, uh, it absolutely works because keeping an eye on that meter up top is so important. It's a lower pressure. I feel like it's not as much pressure as uh, like regular crucible to shot call. Cause you're not yeah, like, cause you're, you're talking general strategy and you know, it has to happen soon, but it's not like, Oh, he's around that corner. If you don't listen to me, I die. Like it's, it's very, yep. uh, it's very big picture at the same time. So you're doing a lot of uh, macro and micro controlling and stuff like that. It's very fun. I think there's lots to be said about like, like I, said, I mentioned it very, very briefly, but like the different types of enemies have different ways of attacking you. Mm-hmm. So I think there's something to be said about like for certain PVE enemies, you send all four of you to collect moats instead of all like a thir- three and a one. Mm, yep. There's like, it's, it, it can go on forever. I can talk about okay. this forever. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's talk about Gambit next week. There's an episode right there. Mm-hmm. Suffice it to say, we're all having fun with it. I'll probably have at least 80 more hours in Gambit. By this <laughs> okay. Yeah. I um, still haven't made it to the, like the dreaming city. There's a, there's one topic left and this is one that we're going to be continuing to talk about out of necessity for the next couple of weeks. But I think it's a good one to end on. We have all gotten a little taste of that sweet, sweet seed of light and we have unlocked some new subclasses. Uh, what'd you guys do? What do you like? I've been waiting to do an extensive review on Nova Warp. Is it wait? Did you do that one first? That's that's the first choice. Yes. Oh man, true to form, true mm-hmm. to form. That's uh, back Void to your roots, Mister Void Boy. Bet you can't um, guess what I picked. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, let's let's um. I mean, we can we can talk about them in depth once we know. But uh, I I, I want to hear like I've seen I've seen clips of that super and it's it's even cooler than I could possibly imagine. I mean, Bonesy, t- t- tell me about the subclass as a whole. Like, yeah, what, what's the feel? There's four perks. I can go around them. It won't be the longest rant I've ever done on this show. Uh, but I think it's a really high skill subclass um, while also having things that just work for you well. It's a it's an amazing balance and it's really fun and always exciting. And um, I I like it. I, I like it more than the other two, even though Devour Warlock, I think, is just flat out on paper hella strong. Uh, but Nova Warp, the first one that's pretty noticeable and that's getting a lot of hype right now is the handheld Supernova, and that's the Grenade Charge. First of all, great mechanic that they're continuing to push. I think that's a really cool feature, and I love the choice, and I still throw my grenade pre- uh, pretty often to you know ammo denial and stuff like that. But you've seen it on... Reddit and stuff like that, you hold a charge and you throw uh, the the grenade out in front of you. It splays across. It's got a nice little arc. And what I didn't expect is that it can one shot a guardian in the crucible if you're in range. It's a monster. It's so strong you can kill yourself if you throw it at a wall. <laughs> it's like a really powerful burst of energy. And you smack them like that. It's like a big extended melee that does a ton of damage. And I think it becomes the first one-shot grenade in the game. Uh, and it's very strong. You got to time it right and uh, use your grenade charge, obviously. But it's pretty fun. Um, the other one, the melee, on the other hand, um, very similar, actually. It's a lot of up-close, in-your-face kind of uh, class here. But uh, you you have an extended reach. You get about an extra meter when it's charged. And it does a secondary explosion. So you reach, you smack them, and then about... Half a second to a second later, there's an explosion. I like this a lot because actually one of the strongest parts about uh, Dawnblade for me, or at least the most fun, is uh, it's very strong melee on the bottom tree. And that tree is known for Phoenix Dive and the incredible super that just keeps going and going and going. But it has an exploding melee that does big damage. And you can, if you're really in a... A group of ads or a group of guardians can get the explosion. So I just like having it on the Voidwalker there because I like those sort of big AOE exploding melees. Um, the big thing on this, and by the way, every new subclass has a beautiful passive perk as the fourth unlock. Right. It's going to be meta defining as we go on and figure out all of these. They are so so strong and add a lot to to the play style. Uh, but this one gets dark matter, which is super passive, so you don't have to think about it. Uh, but void ability kills grant health, melee grenade, and class ability energy. 
So you get a little chunk of health for a kill. If you get three kills, it stacks. So you can get almost a full health recharge and it's giving you all your stuff back. So it's that cycle that we know about, like use this ability to get your other abilities. Just a great passive. You don't have to think about it, but it's always helping you in really cool ways. Uh, the super itself, pretty tricky. Actually, right now, I'm very, very hard to, to pull off a big clip. In a 1v1, you, you probably have a chance because you probably have enough time and, the, and you're a hard target to kill. But in terms of like wiping a teen, that's going to be a, a pretty awesome clip because it is tough. Uh, you can charge up and do the explosion, but it's pretty small if you don't do a big charge. And it takes a lot of time and you kind of float when you're doing a big charge. Uh, the one thing I noticed... Fallout does a really great coverage of this, by the way, on in his video. It's it's perfect. Uh, he likes Blink, and I think Blink is so cool. It's so good now. But Blink combined with the mini little warps make you beyond impossible to, to track. Uh, you're just all over the place, and you're always disappearing, and you can change your momentum and directions. But I really liked it with Burst Glide, because if you've played Dawnblade, you know you get that one hop, and you just shoot yourself forward. So you pop Dawnblade on one side of the map and launch yourself to the other instead of popping it in the air and getting melting. Uh, this one does that a little bit. So you can get that burst. And the second you hit the burst, you do a forward warp and you move forward and you get a really, really great forward propelling motion. And you basically dive bomb an enemy teams. And I think that's really, really clutch for actually getting those pushes and getting up in people's faces. Because the whole idea is being right next to them, but they can't see you. So being able to move forward really, really fast, I think is super strong. And, and to me, better than Blink because it's faster and probably covers the same, if not more ground. That's my review. Nova Warp is really cool. And now I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours not playing it so I can get my Well of Radiance. All right. Well, wow. that was a fucking novel there. Mine's only going to take man. Whew, you're welcome. So. It's so good. Uh <laughs> Bones is a fan. Swain, uh, you, of course, went for um, the new Arc Strider, right? <laughs> mm. Swain's just like, I'm just bonking people with hammers. I don't know why you're so worked up about it. <laughs> uh, I would say uh, that subclass needs like someone to use it a lot to get used to it. It's got like a very, very wide area of effect when you put the hammer down and I think it even like stretches behind you <laughs> a little bit so figuring that out and like timing hammers to create like the fire tornadoes is a whole nother like technique you're going to have to get down they did mention on twitter that the ability to pick up other people's hammers is was a bug and they left it in because it's it was so, so great. Cool. So you can like technically just throw hammers back and forth to each other <laughs> and get your hammer, get your melee back, which is really cool. Um, and I could probably see some like really fun plays with that. Um, but like you really have to spend time. I'm going to have, I'm going to have to spend more time with it uh, because it does have some weird, like, like you said, that last perk that's passive keeps stacking as you use solar abilities so it go like throwing the hammer goes from like just kind of like donking them on the head to like really doing a ton of damage <laughs> as you are building up towards it so uh figuring that out and how that synergizes with your play style is going to be something that takes time birds what did you pick i did the missile one <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's cool, I guess. Um, the missile is like a thing. I don't know. I'll tell you, this this subclass, oh, it just me a little buggy. First off, I have, and like, this is not a rare fluke. It's happened to me a couple times. You can run out of missile time. If you jump off something high, you can go and then just like, <laughs> still be in the air and it just stops and you just, just drift land down. on the ground and is like... Oh, I guess I'm not missile anymore. Uh, so that's kind of annoying. <laughs> I like, anyway, like, I'm not even talking about a huge height or anything. I was on a, you know how an IO, when you spawn into the area that's all hills where the Taken are, I was just up on that first hill and I saw some Taken down there. I was trying to, 
trying to get the thing. I was like, all right, I'll do the, I'll do the missile down there. I got charged up. I need to practice. And uh, I did not make it to the ground. I like just ran out. That was annoying. Um, this one has got the ballistic slam. Um, oh, like in, in like PVP or something, whatever. Like it's fine. You know, I, I'd, I'd prefer to have a regular fist to have it most of the time, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure, I'm sure people will do amazing things with it. <laughs> ballistic slam. This is the melee with the death from above. This one's pretty cool. I like this. Um, it can be a little bit tricky to use it on the fly because you do have to be like have that air sprint thing going on in order for it to work. Um, helps to have a bit of a running start. Um, it's good, but this one also kind of buggy. Like I'm, I feel like a third of the time I hit the ground, but I'm like too close to somebody, so I don't get the animation for it. Like or it doesn't even proc in the first place. Kind of weird. I don't know. Um, but it's fun. That's a fun melee. I like it. Um, it's got the impact conversion. So you get super energy from that. Like it's great. Like these are both those moves are great in Gambit. They're great for clearing big groups of ads. Um, the inertial override, this one's pretty cool. Sliding over ammo, picks it up and reloads your weapon. Awesome. Increases weapon damage for a short time. I just unlocked this one. I haven't really played with with that much. I don't know how much it is, but like still awesome, right? Like great quality of life and a hugely useful thing in both PV and PVP. Yeah, um, that's gotta be cool. It's good, but you know, like it's it's whatever. Like I'll probably um I don't know. I'm not like maybe I should be, but I'm not I wanted to start on my striker because it was the highest light one I had and I'm just, or on my Titan and I figured like oh, I'll do the striker one. That seems good. But like I don't know. I'm not too excited about these. I want to try that Voidwalker one. I want to try the uh <laughs> I want to try the new, uh, uh, the new uh, Night Stalker. Uh, what you call it with the the knives and stuff? I want to try the new Gunslinger. I'm probably gonna switch to my Hunter pretty soon because I got some cool stuff going on. I want to use them all. It's really hurting me that I watch teammates and someone use their, or kill me in the Crucible and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I want to try that super out. And it kind of hurts that I can't just flip to my other characters and jump in the Crucible. Oh well. Oh, well, well, um, we, you know, we, this has been a rush of emotions and, uh, interestingly, I think probably more griping than you normally get from us. Um, I think that's because it's generally accepted at this point that this is the best destiny has ever been. And anyone yeah. who disagrees with me, you're crazy, you're crazy. <laughs> Go back and play D1. <laughs> is that what you, I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. This is the newness and it brings so many things together. I've um e- even for like a new expansion, I've never been so addicted to this game. Uh I love it. And this is um just I like I've no I, I thank you, Bungie, for making this. This is the closest you've gotten yet to the game that's gonna fill the hole inside of me that I uh, <laughs> Dude, I've been trying so hard to stop being melodramatic and being like, this is the destiny we always wanted, but like <laughs> It's pretty it close is. to that. It is that. It kind of is. It's great. In so many ways, like just just save it for the game of the week. But the idea that like actually now it kind of is the game where you can be on a team and everyone has different jobs and you can have a real support class. You can have a real slayer. You can have a real bread and butter. Just like <laughs> they're doing I it. Think, you can have your I think team. for me it was like people like us we love destiny for its core and we'll play it no matter what and then there's other people that like want very specific things out of destiny and they weren't getting mm-hmm. it yeah and forsaken gave everyone like the thing they wanted and like just because we are like finding like some little thing to be upset about is just like oh yeah that's that's it <laughs> that's that's the only thing that we're upset about right now yeah. And like, I, yeah, yeah. If you know us very well, you know, it really means nothing. Like, we're going to do it. We'll do those things. I don't, I don't really <laughs> give a shit. I'll, I'll probably have like a Saturday, like, well, not like a Saturday night when I get done work and I'm like, all right, well, I want to listen, I want to watch this YouTube video and I'll run around this planet and collect materials so I can yeah. upgrade my shit. It's fine. That's more time <laughs> I get to spend shooting things with a bow. Like, I don't even care what I'm doing. It's like, oh, it's a mission. Fine. Cutscene, skip it. I got to get back to shooting heads with this bow. It feels so good. I didn't even know that's what I wanted, that that's what I needed, but that's what I wanted and that's what I needed. Who knew? It has oh. really been the first time in a long time. And even with all this stuff to do and this pressure to gain power level and stuff, 
I have been very, very content to spend half an hour by myself running around in a public space with no challenge active, with no bounty progressing. Exactly. Even though exactly. there's 500 bounties now. There's stuff to do. There's stuff I want. <laughs> I'm like, oh, guys, someone explain to me what the stupid well is. I want to be the high light level like you guys. But like, if not, fine. I am, I've been staying up late just to like explore and shoot stuff and go like, wow, this gun's fun. <laughs> and I'm going to go find some data lettuce with it. Uh, for right now it feels great and it's really cool. Shouts out to so, Forsaken. I mean, stick around for future episodes. We will be the place that we gather all the stuff you want to know about the guns you need, the maps, the roles that you're going to be playing in each game mode. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk so much about Gambit. So if you are worried that we were going to ignore it, we're not. We're going to no. probably talk about it more than you want. Still don't even have the newest uh, competitive mode, which I'm freaking stoked for. There's, oh, yeah. It's like we don't even have all oh, of what Forsaken I contains. Can't, I can't even. Yeah, <laughs> what's it, what's it, yeah. and like, it's like we, we only have the one, uh, the one uh, uh, fast travel point in the Dreaming City right now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, probably that's gonna change over time, and we'll get there's this. More. It's like just big spooky gonna... thing on one side, and I don't know what it well, is. Also, it's like, too scary Gambit, to go in there. Though, guys. <laughs> but Gambit. Gambit. But also Luna's Howl, which I definitely have to get before the last week of the season. Oh, my oh, God. And also the other gun that just apparently is part of that. Luna's the Howl loop. Enhanced. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm calling it. That's it. Till next week. And oh, what a next week it'll be. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Crucibleradio.com Hey, this week we got music from Shadow Snakes. Straight out of Syracuse, New York. Go check them out. It's shadowsnakes.bandcamp.com. Hey, if you're a musician, we want to play you on the show. It's as simple as that. It all starts when you send us an email, crucibleradio at gmail.com. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucible radio and join the squad. See you there.